guys, welcome to my channel and to another Who Done It Wednesday. This case is going to be fairly short today, so I'm going to get straight into my disclaimer. This video is just a whole bunch of information that I found online through different sources that I'm compiling into one video. This isn't meant to disrespect anyone, and I have tried my best to make sure all the information is 100% accurate. And just quickly before we get started, please let me know in the comments down below how you are finding this series so far. Let me know what you think about it and let's just get straight into the case. So today's case is the solved murder of Helen Bailey. Helen was born in England in 1964 and she had a degree in physiology and wanted to become a forensic scientist but eventually she ended up going down the path of writing and actually became a famous author. She had a total of 22 published books ranging from children's fiction to a successful teenage book series. Her brother described her as intelligent, funny and an extremely witty person. In 2011, her and her husband of 15 years, John, were on a holiday in Barbados when sadly during this holiday, John actually died he drowned while he was out swimming. Following the death of her husband, Helen wrote her last book, which was about grief and coping with life without her husband. Hello, my name's Helen Bailey, and I'd like to introduce you to my new book, which is called When Bad Things Happen in Good Bikinis, subtitled Life After Death, and a dog called Boris. Later in that year, she actually started a relationship with a widower named Ian Stewart. They met in an online bereavement group and their relationship just grew. And in 2013, Ian actually ended up moving in with Helen into her 1.5 million pound house. You know, life is good again. I never thought I'd say it. Hello. I never believed it, but it's good again. The couple were even talking about plans to get married. And Helen also had a dog called Boris who she loved very very much. Can I say hello? Boris on here. You can see that he does exist. Oh <laughs> that wasn't supposed to happen. So at this time Helen is finally feeling happy and like she's moving on with her life but something just doesn't seem right. Helen's mother is becoming concerned with Helen's state of mind because her daughter had complained to her that she was kind of feeling spaced out all throughout the day and started feeling drowsy and sleepy all the time. And one day she even left her dog Boris on the beach by mistake. And this is something Helen would never do. Like I said, she adored her dog so much that it was just really out of character for her to do anything like this. And on the 11th of April, 2016, Helen left her home to take Boris, her dog, for a walk and she was never seen again. Her partner, Ian, stated that he actually found a note from Helen that said she was going to stay in their family's like holiday home in a place called Broadstead. But after their family rang to see if Helen had arrived, they discovered that she had never got there, she hadn't planned to go there, and there was not just no sign of her. And it was at this time that Ian decided to report Helen missing from their home. Hello there, my partner has been missing since Monday, said she was going away, hasn't gone, ended up where she said she was going. So um, we just decided we should report it. Helen's mother and brother thought this was really out of character for her and the police even described it as perplexing. But the police weren't that worried at the time. As missing person cases go, this one was pretty far down the list. She was a middle-aged woman who left a note saying she was going away and she'd taken her dog. So at the time, she was pretty far down the list for missing persons. As the weeks go on, her family are just wondering what the the heck has happened to her. They thought maybe she was abducted, maybe being held for ransom. Had she even committed suicide? There were just no signs of her. There was absolutely nothing. The police do decide to visit the holiday home in Broadstairs and they discover that Helen's phone had connected to the Wi-Fi on the 16th of April, just five days after Helen had gone missing. From this, the police decide to delve a little bit deeper into her digital footprint. They go through her emails, her social medias, her bank accounts, and they discover that a change was made from one of her standing orders going from her personal account to a joint account. And that was an increase from a £600 deposit to a £4,000 deposit. If any of you don't actually know what standing order is, it's basically a fixed um, transaction 
of a regular payment to a person or organization. They also saw that her bank accounts were actually being used since she'd disappeared and one transaction that stood out to them was her renewal of her Arsenal City Football Club season ticket to which they discover that Ian Stewart, her partner, is the one who's actually using this account to make these transactions. So they quickly go to question Ian and they find that he's gone. He's actually gone on holiday, I think it was to Spain but I'm not 100% sure on that. It was basically a holiday that him and Helen had booked previously that year and he just decided to go on it anyway. And to me that is a bit strange. Yes, you spend a certain amount of money to pay for this holiday, but if your partner, someone you want to marry is missing, I wouldn't expect you to be in the right state of mind to enjoy a holiday, particularly on your own. So two weeks later, when Ian arrives home from his holiday, police actually arrest him on suspicion of Helen's murder. I'm arresting you on suspicion, on suspicion of the murder of Helen Bailey. Are you joking? And at this point, they still hadn't found Helen's body and they were carrying out searches around the area and around their home when a neighbor informs the police of a 15 foot deep underground cesspit tucked away under the couple's garage of their house. They weren't searching the garage for the well and we thought we must point it out. And a cesspit is basically a septic tank. It's a big hole where all the liquid waste and sewage goes from your home to be disposed of. So it's pretty gross. And this is when officers on the 15th of July 2016 lift up the cover to the cesspit and discover Helen's body immersed in sewage with Boris, her dog, beside her, along with a pillowcase, a dog's toy and two bin bags. And at this point, Ian is looking to be a pretty strong suspect for the killing. They decide to obviously do a post-mortem and they rule Helen's cause of death as suffocation. However, this isn't the end of the story as to how she was murdered. The results of the post-mortem also reveal a trace of Zopiclone, which is basically a really strong sleeping pill and Ian was actually prescribed this drug for himself from his doctor. And with this evidence, they took Ian to trial in January 2017, where he pleaded not guilty. Prosecutors at the trial said that Ian had been administering increasingly large doses of this sleeping pill to Helen over three months where he proceeded to suffocate Helen when she was in this drug-induced state. And it was later alleged that Helen could have still been alive when she was dumped in this cesspit, which is absolutely horrible to think about. As well as how he killed Boris the dog, I never actually read anything about how the dog was killed. It's horrible to think that maybe he didn't even care and just chucked the dog in after. I really hope he didn't do that, but like I said, there was no evidence or anything from what I read online. To further connect Ian to the murder, they discover that he actually went to their holiday home in Broadstairs the day after she went missing. This would have been where he managed to connect Helen's phone to the Wi-Fi. And on the day of the actual murder, he'd also rearranged doctor's appointments that he had in the morning for later that day. He had been seen at the tip or dump if you're American, disposing of a duvet. And he'd even tried to sell one of Helen's other properties by trying to use a power of attorney to do it. And it was said that he really wanted to do the sale quickly, like he really wanted to get the money and just sell the house. Helen was worth about four million pounds and if she died, Ian would be the sole beneficiary to everything. Ian Stewart murdered his successful fiance in order to live off her wealth. On the 22nd of February 2017, a jury unanimously found Ian guilty of the murder of Helen Bailey, as well as a count of fraud, one of preventing lawful burial, and three counts of perverting the course of justice. Well, this has been a seven-week trial, but it took the jury just one day to find Ian Stewart guilty of murdering his fiancée, Helen Bailey. He was then sentenced to 34 years in jail. And something I want to add at the end here as well because of this guilty ruling towards Ian the police are saying they're going to look into the death of his previous wife who had an unexpected death that was apparently caused by epilepsy. As well, something that I didn't mention, when Helen first moved into the house with Ian 
she spoke to her brother and jokingly said something along the lines of, in reference to this cesspit that she had under her garage, she said something along the lines of, that would be a great place to store a body, which is very creepy because it did end up becoming reality for her. And her brother does say that Ian was in earshot when she said this. So that is the end of today's case, the solved murder of Helen Bailey. Like I said earlier, this was quite a short one. It was pretty much open and shut as soon as they found the body. But obviously, this was still such a horrible case. So thank you for watching this video. If you do have any comments you'd like to say, leave them below. And I will see you in my next video.